You've learned about all of the components that usually exist on fuel trains. Now you will learn how they work together to provide a useful combustion system. The four basic functions of all fuel trains are 1. Keeping fuel out of the firing chamber when the equipment is off. 2. Initiating shutdown if an interlock trip or safety device is out of parameter. 3. Helping to provide safe light offs. And 4. Controlling the combustion process. Keeping fuel out of the combustion chamber. Fuel trains help keep fuel out of the combustion chamber when no combustion is taking place through a series of specially designed shutoff valves that are usually spring loaded to close. These are called the safety shutoff and blocking valves. These valves come in different variations and configurations. Some small systems have only one automatic or actuated valve for this function. In other cases, and especially with boilers, double block and bleed systems are required. The specific configuration that your site has depends on the age of the equipment and your insurance and local code requirements. Initiating burner shutdown if an interlock trip occurs. Fuel trains also have a number of components designed to ensure that safe light offs take place and that shutdowns occur immediately if anything goes wrong during operation of the equipment. These components are called permissives or interlocks and sometimes trips. These are a series of devices such as switches or transmitters that are configured to help identify abnormal operating conditions such as a loss of gas or air pressure or water level problems in a boiler. Common trips for boilers and industrial ovens include flame detectors, high and low gas pressure switches, combustion air switches, and high temperature limit switches. Interlocks can be mechanical components, electromechanical devices, or software in a dedicated programmable logic controller, PLC. See codes for special requirements of PLCs that are used in safety applications and as BMSs. Or a more traditional single-purpose microprocessor-based BMS. Helping to provide safe light-offs. There are three different types of light-off control or ignition systems. Manual, semi-automatic, and fully automatic. In manual light-off systems, instead of a BMS system, an operator manages the light-off procedurally. This would still include a purge to make sure that a vessel or combustion chamber is kept safe from fuel-air mixtures. The operator then carefully manages the insertion of some type of torch or electrical spark igniter to the pilot or main flame at low fire for light off to occur when valves may be manually opened. These systems are generally used under very carefully controlled circumstances for large complex equipment that might start only once every five to ten years. This could be refinery equipment, glass melting equipment, and or equipment used in large paper mills that run for very long periods. Risks are controlled with extensive startup procedures and well-trained personnel. In some cases, this is done in conjunction with specialized contractors that have temporary heat-up equipment. This equipment has burners that get systems such as refractory and holding vessels near operating temperature before the equipment's integral built-in burners are started. Preheating using temporary equipment is common for coke ovens. Some zinc refining processes, steel ladles, and glass making equipment. In the case of semi-automatic systems, a start button is pressed. This starts a purge fan and a timed pre-fire purge sequence begins once airflow is proven. Once the purge is complete, manual intervention is required to actually begin the light off. The system might then be configured for someone to hit an igniter button, which would open a pilot fuel valve and start a spark igniter. It might then be necessary for a main fuel valve to be opened manually. In a fully automatic system, 
A start button is hit and the operator has no further involvement. The BMS handles everything from start to finish. This sequence consists of verifying pre-start interlocks or permissives, the pre-ignition purge, the pilot trial for ignition, and finally, the main flame trial for ignition. These discrete steps are described next. The light-off process. Verifying pre-start interlocks or permissives. A number of basic pre-start conditions must be met before the BMS can allow the light-off sequence to progress. These are equipment-specific, but could include having adequate fuel pressure, no flame in the firebox, verifying that the safety shutoff valves and blocking valves are closed, and if the design is to meet European standards, that is, seeing an air switch open before it is closed. Most systems also require the main fuel control valve to be at a low fire position prior to light off unless the burner can be ignited safely at any firing rate, which is rare. This usually means that the fuel flow control valve is proven to be somewhere between 15 and 25 percent of high fire capacity. You'll have to check with a burner manufacturer to find the correct minimum firing rate for your particular equipment so that a qualified burner technician can make the necessary adjustments at commissioning. There may be additional items that relate to the specific equipment as well. For example, there has to be an adequate water level in a boiler. The Pre-Ignition Purge NFPA 86, the standard for ovens and furnaces, calls for a purge of at least four air changes of the firebox volume before an ignition source can be introduced. NFPA 86 is applicable to ovens and furnaces only. Boilers have a number of issues that must be considered to calculate the proper purge time. Different purge time requirements are identified in NFPA 85 for single burner and multiple burner boilers. For example, the purge requirement for some single burner boilers is in terms of air changes and can be 4 to 8 changes. There is a minimum of 5 minutes or 5 volume changes, whichever is greater, for multiple burner boilers. Exceptions for simultaneous dual burner systems do exist. Other requirements regarding minimum air flows and stipulations can increase this amount. In the case of refinery or other traditional chemical plant process furnaces, depending on their design, the pre-purge may be done using mechanisms other than a traditional fan. This can involve a steam purge of the furnace or vessel for displacement of air volumes, or a steam jet eductor which acts as a fan to move air through the unit. American Petroleum Institute API standards are a good reference source for this equipment. It should also be noted that some classes of equipment, including some boiler systems, require a post-firing purge. Some BMSs are configured to remove residual firebox gases with a purge after the flame has been extinguished for any reason. This requirement exists in part because flame detectors and valve systems do not always act instantaneously when a loss of flame is detected. Hence, there can be some fuel flow, usually for up to four seconds, before a flame detector is required to send a signal for fuel shutoff. Then the safety shutoff and blocking valves have one second to close. The post-purge can remove the five seconds of residual flow if a loss of flame occurs. The duration and airflow for the post-purge is an equipment and BMS specific function. The pilot trial for ignition period. Depending on the size and type of system, pilots are allowed 10 seconds to light for natural gas and 15 seconds for fuel oil. This is often a configurable setting on modern BMSs, although in the case of some equipment it's a permanent change. You can always decrease it, but you cannot increase it when configuring on most BMS systems. It should also be noted that some European codes allow only 4 seconds. 
actually it should never really take 10 seconds. If you're not getting a pilot lit in three or four seconds, your system needs to be evaluated more closely. This is an important startup consideration. Once pilots start to approach seven or eight seconds to light, they can be audible and the condition can be an indicator of something going very wrong. The main flame trial for ignition period. Once a pilot is lit and the main gas firing rate control valve is at a minimum position, the main automatic safety shutoff and blocking valves open while the vent valve, if it exists, closes. A timer allows a finite time for the main flame to light. This period of time is called the main flame trial for ignition period. Depending on the size and type of system, this may be 10 seconds for gas and 15 seconds for fuel oil. Once again, as in the case of the pilot trial for ignition period, it should never really take 10 or 15 seconds for the main flame to light. Again, how long this takes should be part of a regular observation and evaluation, just as in the case of the pilot trial for ignition period. It should never take more than three or four seconds to light a main flame.